some cars <laughs> like always and but I want to tell you this is the day for the spinning and if you notice grandma has her Rolex here her rolled wool and here is my spindle and my beautiful wool that we washed now you know grandma's notes again this is called a diz a diz means spinning wool, and uh, you know, you spin, and so let me hope I can, the wind is kind of blowing, but it's okay, we're going to do this, and this spindle is called bay a diz. now remember, the bay hot chad means you use this with the spinning, okay? with the spindle. It's called Bay Adizi. That's a spindle. And let's see, I hope you can see that clearly. Now, this is what is considered, it's called, it's called so many names, but for us today, the two names we're going to call it is the Navajo Lap Spindle. Also, it's called the Southwest Spindle. So those are the two names for this type of spindle. Now, this is a spindle usually is about 30 inches long. The shaft, okay, this is the shaft. It's about 30 inches long. And the whirl down here, okay, let's see, is the wind is blowing. The whirl, W-H-O-R-L, is the disc. It's kind of like a disc, but they call it a whirl. And um, that is usually four and a, four and a half in di diameter. And so in this, I have written 
it's designed for high spinning for uh, the high higher speed of spinning and so that is one now we're going to talk just briefly really quick about the spindle history okay the whirl is this one okay this is the whirl the whirl weighted spindles date back to the Neolithic times, the Stone Age. And archaeologists have found these in the digs around all around the world. So it wasn't just the Navajos or whoever that created this. Now, the bottom whirl spindles the bottom whirl spindle, spindles, like this one, are the preferred spindles in, for plying yarn. And as well as, um, it also achieves evenness, un uniformity, and strength in the yarn. That's why it's a preferred uh, spindle. So those are the notes, okay? As you can tell, this is the wool that grandma washed. And this is basically a very easy to, to figure how to spin this. Now, when you do this, you rein it in. And when you're spinning it, basically this is called drafting this when you pull this okay when you're pulling the the yarn and you need to pull gently okay and you just pull very gently and it it, it does allow you to I mean if you can see then that then you let the spindle do the work okay and that's what um, is so important and so this is what you do now when you do this you tug a little okay and you tug a little on this and gently because you don't want to break it and it does uh, basically I mean it, you're I guess stretching it whatever but that drafting, that's what it's called. Now, when you get to the end, okay, of the row lag, I hate calling it row lag, but that's what, what grandma does. And now some people do it differently than I do, but um, you lay this end in here, you hold it, and then you want to use the spindle to twist that, okay? So you're kind of joining, not kind of, you are joining. And so you can continue with this, with your spinning, the row lag. And sometimes, uh, you know, some of this, sometimes you get excess bumpy little hairs you can actually take these off and sounds like the blackbirds know what I'm doing. They're hanging about. So, and in Navajo, when you draft it, it's really funny because I thought of what I, the word and it's called jeton. You know, I guess it would say jeton, jeton, you know, hajoko jeton. And that means, you know, be very careful and gentle when you, when you do do this. Now, some of these ex excess wool you want out of there. So, anyways, and notice how, how Grandma keeps this hooked in here. And excuse me, um, you, you, how you hold this and you use the cup of your thumb to, uh, Somebody says, every time you do this, you make the wool cry. I, I don't know. That's what they say. 
and this thing is not letting grandma go. Okay, so see how the cup of right here, you let the, the spindle spin and that's basically right where it helps you to put a good spin. And you know, some people like to get a, a cup or a bowl or, you know, so that notice what grandma's using for the spindle to make it easier to spin. And um, anyways, that's basically it about spinning. And um, the row lags, you just go ahead and like, see, if you notice, grandma's has to gently pull. You, that's the idea. You do don't have your go don't and that allows you to lengthen the wool and so then you can keep spinning and spin and spin and this is usually really tough it, it's incredible how tough the yarn becomes and you can like I said you can make your you know, your own yarn to make your sweaters or whatever you, you desire. And see, when I roll it down at the bottom, that's all I'm doing is I'm allowing it to roll in there and then I continue here. And here we go again. We're drafting. Or don't. <laughs> it sounds funny. don't. But anyways, so that's, and, and you just basically continue doing this and you spin and spin and spin and wrap it and then spin again. So this is a very, another quick spinning that we're, uh, another method or, and the process that grandma wanted to show you. And if you notice that, uh, I have two types of wool that I'm using here. So that's basically almost it for this. And uh, this is, you just wrap it around here and put this, uh, your wool when, you, when you're finished. I usually just kind of like, here, let's open that up. And so you're, you're done. Now this is my previous wool I did. And then this is grandma's. It's kind of funny how this looks a little colored. Now, once we finish spinning all of the roll legs, because there's more roll legs, I'm going to take this and I will show you how you, uh, you make a skein out of it. You wrap it around your feet. And that's what I love, used to love to see my grandmother do that. And so once you wrap it and then you can tie it up, uh, basically, you, uh, we're going to go and find some of the vegetation, okay? Because it's early uh, and it's not quite uh, springish, and some of the plants are starting to um, to grow. We're going. To, I'm going to um, use like walnuts or juniper leaves where I will show you some of the different ways to naturally dye this. Now, if there's some yellow, you can actually use sage as well. It's kind of like a yellow tea that's around here. Uh, you have juniper, you have walnuts, you have uh, just onions, onion skin. But I will show you a, the whole uh, a different, I mean, I'm not going to show you tons, but I think I will use maybe four or five dyes and show you how to dye your your yarn and that's I love that part and we'll learn about that next time and so I appreciate your time to listen these are processes like I said not everybody wants to learn how to do this but it is a joy to do something with your hands and it's it's so it's, it's so therapeutic and it's wonderful to have this, to have this strength, to know how to create your own yarn and to card, to shear, everything backwards I'm doing, but anyway, so 
um, and then the process of uh, I'm not a really good weaver so I think what I'm going grandma's going to do is get a weaver I'm trying to find a weaver who will take the time to weave and show you the weaving um, I'm in my be beginning stages I I've always done this part with grandma my busy and then she would just go and start um, after we would dye the wool, she would uh, set up the loom. And I used to just, I, I do, adored watching my grandmother uh, doing this. And it's just so wonderful. And, and to pass this on to you um, to this point as well. And this is beautiful. So remember, this is a Navajo lap spindle. And thank you again. Grandma loves you and hug Gorne. Yeah, I win a hug. I win a